So actually, before we start the video, I want to quickly go over what, uh, like, what I've been up to, where I've been the last couple of months. Uh, well, you see, I kind of held myself up here for, like, two months straight, um, just working on some new logo designs. I kind of got on a huge design kick lately, and, uh, I'm really excited to show off what I have. I decided, what better way to get back into it than to recreate a bunch of modern game logos in Papyrus. What have I done? Good logo design is incredibly important. Your logo needs to make a statement. It's a symbol of what you and your company represent, and I'd even go as far as to say that a good logo might even be more important than a nice cold glass of Dr. Pepper. In my previous video on logos, I touched on the bad logos of the gaming industry, but didn't really go over any examples of what makes a logo good. That's my bad. A good logo, no matter what business you're in, gets your point across to the public. The main purpose is to convey the message the company wants to send, and it also has to represent that product in the form of art. For instance, whenever I look at McDonald's, I see yellow. I see the golden arches. It makes me think of fries. I start to get hungry. Oh, fuck. Another good example is FedEx's logo, because whenever I look at it, my eyes immediately notice the contrasting color scheme that they have here. And then the simplicity of it represents the company's professionalism and dedication to delivering packages. But most importantly, and it blew my tiny little fragile mind whenever I noticed this a few years back, but there's an arrow. is right there. Oh my god! Assemble the squad! Yeah, let's go, Herbert! Hello? I need you to come over right now. Wait, what's going on? Are you in danger? Did you know there's an arrow in the FedEx logo? Really, dude? I'm missing my kid's soccer game for this. The hidden symbol of the arrow in between the letters E and X symbolizes the company's constant movement and quick delivery. And they also got a bunch of other cool looking logos that are all colorful and shit, And they all use the same design. It's really fun! Now this importance in logo design is just as important to video games as it is to other industries. Whenever I'm shopping around in a store, if I see this on your shelves, I'm not buying it. So I thought it'd be fun to take roughly 10 minutes of your time today to talk about good video game logos because, I don't know, why not? You're probably pooping while you're watching this anyway, so <laughs> you got nowhere to be. So let's kick off this hot and juicy good time with a modern favorite of mine, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Goodness God, that is a nice logo. Breath of the Wild's logo is versatile, it's minimal, but it's strong. One of the strategies to designing a good logo is having the capability of shrinking it down or blowing it up and asking yourself, does this still work? Yeah, 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 it does. One thing that I adore about this logo is that it actually tries to be interesting while it's still being minimalistic. This? Boring. This? Oh yes. So in this logo, you have little bits and pieces of the font being chipped away that's supposed to symbolize the decaying of Hyrule, and then there's these slight variation in font sizes down here that actually does add some depth to the subtitle. There's also the symbol of the Silent Princess being included right here in the logo, and you think it's just something that the designer stuck there to look pretty because they needed something there, but then you actually look up what the point of that flower is, and then you realize it's something that can only grow on its own in the wild and nature always wins in the end. Holy sh**! But obviously the biggest thing on display is this little guy. If you're someone who's into Zelda and its lore, you know that it takes a lot, and I mean a lot of damage to the Master Sword to make parts of it chip away. So this logo calls many things into question. It makes you sit back and think, Link, what did you do, man? And I actually really like how everything besides the sword is just this one kind of dull tan color. It's kind of soothing and relaxing to look at. It's nice. The End is Nigh is a game where everything around you is dead. Which is just how the person who redesigned MasterCard's new logo must have felt inside. It's just two circles. Somebody paid for this. Now one of the main reasons I just love this logo is because it seems to be really heavily inspired by old horror movies or like 90s graphic novels with this bold intense imagery. It just looks like they were going for like a scary vibe by using these thick lines and these deep shadows to make these really bold striking visuals. And this noir monochrome style works so freaking well because of these thick white solids combined with these deep dark black as night shadows. They wanted you to feel something. Another really subtle tactic the artist uses is perspective. Notice how it seems to slow 
slowly creep towards you by making the letters get larger as the text goes down. And the brilliant thing is, it's actually kind of a play on words since the text literally reads the end as nigh and it's actually drawing closer to you. That's freaking brilliant. But one of my favorite things to look at here is just the use of rain because it like drags down various parts of the logo. It really adds to the whole like somber tone that this is going for. You're not exactly looking at this and thinking, wow, now I want to go on a picnic because that would be weird. So, uh, here's a logo for a racing game where you're supposed to be able to flip your car upside down and continue to drive. And here's that same logo flipped upside down. So logos haven't exactly been kind to the Resident Evil franchise, if you uh, if you see what I'm saying. Now, I'm not going to be the one to say what's wrong with this logo and what this is suggesting in my super duper squeaky f***ing clean video, but thankfully, Resident Evil 7 broke this horrific trend because uh, Resident Evil 7's logo is so freaking good that it hurts my body in a really good way. I feel like this logo finally nailed the essence of what the series is trying to be because I mean, look at it. It feels dirty. It's grimy. It looks like horror. It takes the text used from the first two games, modernizes it, and then distresses it with like this imagery and these dark themes. I love the application of the cracks and the smudges. And if you look closely, there's fingerprints. So that's fun for the kids. But obviously the most obvious reason to why this logo obviously works so well is how smoothly they threw that seven in their hot. Mama, that is spicy. You know how when most companies do this sort of thing, it just feels kind of forced and like vomit inducing? Yeah, this one doesn't. The Roman numeral seven fits beautifully inside the already established font here. And guess what? They did the same thing in Japan and it works. It just works. So whether or not you like Mario games or you hate them, or you think they're good or not, I, I don't care. Uh, you pretty much have to admit that they've always had impressive logo design. Oh God. But one logo, that got it all so right in my opinion is Mario's time machine, baby. Look at that contrast. Oh God, it's Super Mario Odyssey. Mario's newest and biggest adventure is the one that has to take the cake here. And for good reason, because look at this boy. It's got charm. It's got some bevels. It's got some light gradients. It's got two different perspectives that they somehow pulled off. And I don't even know how they did that. I'm also just a big fan of how in recent years, Nintendo's decided to really bring out the colors by like letting them protrude off the text in Mario logos instead of squishing and hiding them inside those thick strokes like they did with Sunshine and the galaxies. Oh god, that was a long sentence. Like the other logos on this list so far, Mario Odyssey's tells a story. It uses the globe in place of the O, so we can infer that this is a story that involves traveling. Probably around a globe. It also continues the traditional Mario fashion of using mostly primary colors here, plus there's a little bit of green to stimulate the viewer's interest, and I do love me a dab of that green. They actually decided to include Cappy in here, because most Mario logos steer away from putting characters like, like just right there in the logo, but hey, Cappy's just that important, I guess. Now for this next one, I actually want to talk about two because they're both equally as brilliant in my opinion. Evolve and Dead by Daylight. Both are similar games. They're both about asymmetric multiplayer where four humans go up against some type of monster or villain. And in Evolve's case, it's like a gigantic monster. And in Dead by Daylight, it's one of these incredibly well-designed serial killers. But what's so smart about these logos? Well, they both integrate their core mechanics directly into the logos themselves. Evolve has this minimalist layout with four squares representing the humans versus with the V there, you, you, you got that versus one giant monster. And then Dead by Daylight does something similar with its logo where it uses the tally symbol to draw up the four survivors and then it has the fifth tally mark slash through them all, AKA the killer. These logos are the perfect example of minimalism done well. It takes a very simple concept and it uses it to its advantage. Like I, know, I am blown away when I still look at these. Like these are so intelligent and smart. It just makes me feel like a complete moron and like I'm never gonna create anything good ever. Final Fantasy logos are notorious for being a bit complicated and overly symbolic, but you know what? It's Square Enix. That's just par for the course. I can't help myself whenever I look at these. These logos are some of the most gorgeous things that this industry pumps out because whenever somebody decides to say that video games shouldn't be considered art, I just slap them right in the face with one of these. One shining example of a Final Fantasy logo that got it 100% right in my opinion is Final Fantasy IVs. All Final Fantasy logos share the same element of this text. Like, notice it's not a sans serif font, like it's a serif font, so it's serious, it's warming, it's a really pleasant font to look at. Now this is the logo for the remake, and I've chosen to go with this one because it shows something that we don't see that often in a logo. 
because basically the real story of Final Fantasy IV is actually about the fall of Golbez. It's very fitting that we get him on the front and center right here. Ultimately, this is Golbez's story. This is his logo. It showcases his struggle with his lust for power and his inability to control himself while reflecting on all the horrible things he's done. I love this. I'm not usually one to love having this many colors inside of a font like or inside of a gradient, but man, I think they nailed it. I love how the artist uses these dim blues and purples that take up most of his body that's supposed to symbolize darkness, but then it has this strong, bright, warm color scheme close to his face. It's very effective because it subtly brings your attention to what this logo considers to be the most important element, and that's Golbez's rugged, manly face. God, he's so hot. What did you say? Okay, I wasn't saying anything. I still can't believe there's an arrow in there. Well, believe it or not, that's all the time we got for today. Tune in next week where I'm going to host a seven-hour live stream recreating all the Assassin's Creed game logos and Comic Sans. Bye!